night to start as yellow rain warning. The whole country is affected by the alert, which lasts until midnight tonight, which will lead to localised flooding in parts. An air and forecaster Matthew Martin describes where the worst of the weather will be in operation nationwide. It's late October and the days of brewing outdoors have definitely come to an end. Although the wet weather has forced me indoors, it hasn't washed away my enthusiasm to try new things on brew day. As a craft beer enthusiast and home brewer, I'm all about variety and the art of splash brewing has recently caught my attention. So much so, it's now become a regular method of mine to split batches, i.e. use the same wort to make at least two different beers. The concept of split batch brewing is pretty straightforward, has been around for ages and offers very divergent results. My post boil method is to cool the wort and split it into two separate fermenters and then begin creating two different craft beers. Each fermenter is then pitched with a different yeast strain along with fruit additions, botanicals and hop additions once fermentation has finished. The process of split batch brewing encourages home brewers to experiment with different recipes and ingredients while only using half the batch. Before jumping into today's brew day, let's take a look at my two experimental recipes which will be split from today's batch. Okay, first up, hibiscus is normally associated with a summer beer, but not in my rule book. I'll be adding orange zest and coriander seeds to give it a bit of a seasonal aroma, color and flavor. Stay tuned on this one, guys. The second recipe is a juniper and lime IPA. Now, for gin and tonic fans alike, you might like this one. The addition of juniper berries should deliver hints of pine and citrus aroma and flavors, while the lime zest will give it that bite of zinginess. So I begin my brew day by preparing and conditioning my malts for what I call my splatch brewing base beer. I hate that word splatch. It's like some, I hate splatch. I'm not using splatch anymore. It's like some, I don't know, fly splatting, catching, yoki me bobs, thingy me jig. So split batch from now on. Now for my fermentables, I will be using pale ale malt, Vienna, flaked oats, caramel, and weed flakes with dextrose added to the end of the boil. My base malt is Hookhead Minch Malt, exclusively grown in the Ring of Hook Peninsula in County Wexford here in Ireland. I'll be using 65%. This malt will help me achieve a full-bodied, robust beer, and I source mine directly from my suppliers at the Homebrew Company here in Ireland. I'm also adding 8% of Weyermann's Vienna Malt, which is a lightly killing lager style malt made from quality two row German spring barley. Equally suited to both ales and lagers, it produces full bodied beers with golden color and smooth mouthfeel. The flavor is malty sweet with gentle notes of honey, almond and hazelnut. In addition, I'll be adding 7% of flaked oats. Flaked oats contain high levels of lipids, better glutens and gums, which will impart a silky mouthfeel and creaminess to both these beers. The addition of 5% caramel should contribute to a sweet malt character, as well as a fuller body to the beer. This malt will also have a noticeable impact on foam stability and head retention. <music> Flaked 
flaked wheat is my final malt on this one. It will add a crispier mouthfeel to the overall beers. I'm also looking for a bit of haze on these, so my 4% addition should help with that. So I mash in for my standard one hour mash. This base beer is a 37 liter batch. 30 liters for my mash and 23.5 for my sparge are required here on my grain fodder G40. Now, although this batch will be split two ways, I actually create three recipes. One recipe solely for my base beer and contains only the fermentables for my 37 liters. Then I create two separate 19 liter recipes for the split batches. The first recipe is my vibrant hibiscus ale. I'm hoping for a bubbly and bright beer with floral tropical flavors and colors of real hibiscus. Stay tuned on this one, guys, for the tasting session at the end. The second recipe is for my juniper and zingy lime IPA. I'm looking for a flavorful winter IPA that captures the aroma of the season. I love earthy, piney flavors in beer. Lime and juniper, sure, that spells gin and tonic, yep. With this blend of Irish juniper berries and lime zest combined with pine character hops, this I hope will evoke the classic gin and tonic cocktail inspired flavors that in theory will create a refreshing diverse seasonal craft beer. Fingers crossed. And we move on to hops. The addition of Idaho 7 should add some nice pine, tropical, fruity and floral flavors and aromas, most notably mango and pink grapefruit. I'm also adding Eureka hops, which are dank and resinous and with fruity notes ranging all the way from tropical citrus to dark stone fruit. Eureka rounds out blends and truly shines as a late hop addition. I'm hoping to achieve strong herbal notes and more pine with this. Now with split batch brewing, my preference is not to add any bittering or aroma hops during the boil. This is purely personal preference. Instead, I rather focus on dry hopping later, which is a clever way to isolate hop aromatics and other characteristics for tailoring future recipes. My boil time on this one will be one hour. My pre-boiled volume is 43.5 liters and my pre-boiled gravity is 1.056. So I've added my dextrose and I'm now ready to start cooling and splitting the wort over my two fermenters. So in essence, it's not really so much about the brew day, which consists of a fairly basic recipe here. More so, it's what you do during primary and secondary, which really takes center stage and gives you the blank canvas or canvases to create and be creative. With the first fermenter full, I can now prepare and rehydrate my Voss to bake yeast. Guys, I recommend don't go sprinkling the uh, yeast. It's fairly simple to rehydrate dry yeast and it's highly recommended. Just follow the instructions on the pack.
So it's been four days into fermentation and my fermenters have been getting a lot of activity unlike me as the rain continues to come down in buckets here. Okay, time to take some gravity readings. First up is my US05 batch, which will be my Juniper and Lime IPA. So this one has come in at 1030 after four days, so there's a fair bit left on that one. My Kaveik yeast, as expected, finished in about four days. Now, the hibiscus flower petals aren't just eye-catching, they're also edible when dried, which means this recipe is going to get a lot more colourful. The flavour derived from hibiscus in beer is berry-like, fruity and of course very floral. The colour will be a vibrant red-pink hue, perfect for this hazy seasonal ale. Now, many brewers prefer to add hibiscus at the end of the boil. My preference here is to make up a hibiscus tea. Let it cool and then add it to the fermenter once fermentation has completed. I'm also going to add crushed coriander seeds and orange zest. Two additions which absolutely complement each other. That said, I do need to be careful on how much of this I add not to overpower the hibiscus or the hops. So I add my crushed coriander seeds in with my lime zest and make up a tincture using vodka. I then measure out and add my Chinook dry hop additions. Next, I add my hibiscus tincture into a separate hop net. Okay, at this point, it's actually looking like something from a bloody horror movie called Midnight Splatch. Now guys, if this video has inspired you to brew your own split batch beers or even inspired you to get into home brewing, there's a lot more to it than just water, grain, yeast and hops. Here's a couple of additions you could experiment with to enhance appearance, aroma and flavour of those beers. Cardamom has a complex flavour that can be cola-like while also offering notes of light citrus flavour and floral-like aromas. Cinnamon, great for winter beers, combines well with orange peel, vanilla or seeds of paradise. Star anise has a similar flavour to black licorice, but star anise has more complexity and at lower levels can add some bright herbal notes. Vanilla is great for winter seasonal beers, where the sweet aroma pairs nicely with other festive spices like cinnamon, allspice and clove. Some do like it hot and chilli peppers can add multiple contributions as well as the heat and the spiciness. Floral, fruity and unique, elderflowers are used in many craft beer styles from IPAs to Belgian Lambics to Saisons. I love elderflower beer. Raspberries can add refreshingly sweet depths of aroma and flavours to a number of beer styles, epic in fruit sours. Orange peel can be added to almost any style from IPAs to bitters, blonde ales, wit beers, wheat beers to porters, imperial stouts and even oatmeal stouts. A favourite of mine, spruce tips add a delightful combination of pine, citrus, woody green and even wine grape or red berry. Now this herb imparts a nice aroma and a smooth hint of bitterness. Flavours are similar to a subtle chamomile mint blend with just a hint of lavender. So after about 10 days, my US05 batch gravity has dropped to 1010, so I'm now good to prepare my late additions, juniper berries, lime zest, and my hops, Idaho 7 and Eureka. So first out, I make up a gin tincture for the juniper berries and the lime zest. Again, personal preference here, I'm using craft gin. Hey, 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 hey. 
Now guys, a big shout out to the homebrew company here in Ireland who kindly supplied the hops for this episode. Big thanks to Shane and all the crew at the homebrew company. If you're living in Ireland or if you're living in the UK and you're looking to get into making your own craft beer, be sure to check out the homebrewcompany.ie. Especially check out their all grain kits, which include all you need for custom recipes. I add all my ingredients while being mindful to reduce splashing or adding oxygen. So I do this part as quickly and as carefully and get that lid back on the fermenter. Hey there guys and welcome to the uh, Beardy Hunter sessions where I'm going to be trying a number of beers today but first up is the, uh, the clone of my Guinness for an extra stout. Now if you haven't seen the video of me creating this, uh, this delicious brew check out the link um, above. So I have the original here and I have my own. I was going to do a blind tasting session on it but I said no do you know what we'll just jump straight into it. And Okay, look. So I mean, they're pretty much, pretty much identical. Both black as night and really good heads on both of them. Now I went a little bit wild with that, but I'll show you that this has a great head as well. Yeah, strong kind of roasty, chocolatey, chocolatey, strong kind of chocolate uh, aroma and they're very similar um, with regards to aroma. This has, this has a stronger uh, aromatic profile than my own um, beer. Looks great, smells great, looks great, smells great. I mean, an exceptional beer, an exceptional beer. Um, this finish is quite dry and mine doesn't finish dry for the simple reason I use the saturated yeast from WHC. Check out WHC's website. They have amazing yeasts. There's more of a bitterness from the original. This one is more silky and smooth on the, uh, on the palate. Um, there's more there's more hop character coming from mine because with this I'm getting the bitterness on the um, on the palate. I do love the character in this. There's a sharpness to this. This is more silky, smooth. It is bold, it is decadent, it is elegant. And it is black as night. It's a great recipe. It's a great beer. Do give it a go. Okay, you guys, the time has come for the big tasting session of my juniper IPA and my hibiscus beer. I have them kegged and conditioning up in my kegerator, up in the shed, and I have my two take of glasses ready to go up. Rather than doing kind of one and one, I'll bring back two. Give me a sec. Okay guys, and here we have them. One brew day, two beers, split batch recipes. I have my hibiscus and my juniper and lime IPA. I've tried these and they are delicious. I mean, they couldn't be so different. But look at the beautiful color of that. It's a lovely red kind of pinkish hue. I've added nothing else to this for the color. This is purely from the hibiscus. By God, do you get it? And of course the chinook hops in there, the coriander seeds and the, uh, the orange zest. I mean, the aroma is just fantastic. It is such a good beer. There's, um, there's this aftertaste that it's kind of really kind of citrusy, floral, almost sour aftertaste that just lingers and dances. I mean, the flavors from this and the aroma, and I just love the color. I just love the color. 
And this bad boy, where do I even start? I was drinking this last night. Oh my God. Juniper and lime. So juniper berries and lime. And I mean, I can get that from here. Oh, it's so refreshing. The aroma of citrus just shoots through the roof of your nose with this one. And of course, with the Idaho 7 and Eureka hops. And of course, the lime zest. I mean, and then there's the, uh, of course, there's the juniper berries. I shut up and just taste it. I mean, it's an epic, it's an epic recipe. There's a bitterness that nearly shoots your head off. Um, but the bitterness doesn't come from, of course it doesn't come from hops. It's come from the, uh, the lime zest. And this is what I mean about experimentation. You have one brew day, you have two very different beers and it's what you do with that recipe. It's what you do with your brew day and it's what you do during fermentation. You decide, you plan it. If you are thinking of doing a split brew batch, come up with your own recipes, come up with your own additions, come up with your own flavors. Look at the different malts that you can do. Look at the different approaches to water treatment. Experiment, create, and be bloody creative. These are two very good beers and I stand over both of them. I am delighted with both of them. And all... Take your turn, move to your right. The witch? Move over. Then take your move chair over. and move to your right then. This way. Move to your, move to your right. right. Move to your right. Here. Oh my God. Who are you? Who am I? I'm the beardy boy or whatever it is you're calling yourself these days. I'm the guy who did the naked shower scene for you earlier. What's that you're drinking? Splatch. I'm not having any, can I have, can I have some of yours though? They look really nice. Yeah, like you got me in the shower scene. They got me doing this shower scene and it was like freeze. I was freezing, bleeding, freezing in, in, the, in the shower. It was like, Stop I was talking. pretending to be him waking Stop. up in the, uh, oh, in the morning and going God. for a shower and having a cup of coffee. And all that. I'm actually a stunt double. Stunt double. Mm. Yeah. And this is an even real beard. Cheers, guys.